Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here, and with me today is my beautiful girlfriend, Leanna, who also is known as Panda Lee on YouTube, and uh, we just wanted to make a quick video. For all the people who out there who always say, that, oh, he's horrible at games, I think this is kind of a, a shot to the, or punch in the face for those idiots, because, you know, <clears throat> the bottom line is, again, I can be good at games if I want to. If I actually want to take a minute to try to be serious with it, I can do it. The thing is, when I'm doing my playthroughs, I don't want to do that. And that's why I play, oh no, he sucks at Metal Gear. Because I wasn't trying hard to do good at the game. That's not what I do. I'm not a top level pro player at every game that I play. I'm trying to have fun. That's the key here. As we move into the living room, look at this. Pretty different, huh? In fact, this is what it looked like the day I moved in. Except for the fact that there's a lamp there and a few wires. I guess the, the, motor, or the uh, cable modem I have to return tomorrow to Cablevision. The coffee table and the sofa are staying for whoever moves in next. Bar stools are also staying. Those lamps I'm giving to my parents. Two cable boxes to return tomorrow. A broken PS3 that I think someone's going to try to trade in. I don't know. In the corner here, the only thing that's staying behind is a box of DVDs that my dad's going to give away. There's a range top here which is a new range top for the kitchen way over there that we never installed. So my dad's gonna get that installed, make the place look a little bit nicer. There's nothing else here. The back porch, we actually kept the furniture there. We figured we're not moving that across the country. It's valuable glass stuff. And maybe whoever decides to rent would appreciate that being out there. Heading into the bedroom. Unfortunately, some stuff got lost in the shuffle, all these posters and things. A lot of these I probably would want to take with me, like there's Street Fighter, Ghostbusters, but I, during the shuffle of the move, I just didn't get them packed in time. And that stuff's staying, unfortunately. But as you can see, nothing against this wall here anymore besides the lighting. I did leave this computer desk because it's Ikea and it's a piece of crap. It's incredibly flimsy. It wobbles and I knew it would not survive the move. A couple odds and ends that I left behind, as you can see, a lamp, an ottoman. An old poker set full of poker chips that I forgot to pack and it weighs too much to carry on a plane, so that's staying. The portable air conditioner, inter internal movable air conditioner, is staying. But yeah, look, empty. Empty walls. The final condo walkthrough here. Much like the day I moved in, right? Much like the day I moved in. Looks, the, It's the same deal. Um, all right, the closet, a piece of luggage is my old luggage. That's staying behind. Cause I already got new luggage I'm taking with me to Seattle. It's not new, I've had it already for years, but it's the newer. Again, more posters I didn't get to pack. Hawaiian shirts, a few ties, and old belts, and a comforter that my parents are keeping. <clears throat> and the bathroom really didn't have that much to do. Like the towels that are in here are my parents' towels. They lent me towels that they're gonna take. Uh, you know, there's really not much left behind here that I could move, you know what I mean? Like you're not gonna move uh, your bo bottle of freaking shampoo because you're going to buy more shampoo in the meantime waiting for the stuff to show up from the move so there's no reason to do that. So a lot of this stuff pretty much just stayed behind. You know, toiletries and stuff. Look, what am I going to do with that stuff, right? So that's just staying and my parents will either keep it here or throw it out. So that is it. Stick a fork in it. That is it for the CT condo. Served me well from 2009 until now, almost five full years. Did a lot of work in here. Had a lot of memories. A lot of fun, but now it's time to move on to the next adventure in Seattle, Washington. So, for the CT Condo, this is DSP, Phil Burnell, signing off. Thank you for serving me well, but that is it. Moving on to bigger and better things. Definitely need an upgrade from this place. It is time to get the hell out of here. And let's say, fingers crossed, that we can find either a reliable renter or we can find someone like my aunt who wants to stay here for the next year or two so that it's not too much trouble while we get set up over in Washington. I would much rather have, you know, an easy time over here and have to deal with a bunch of stuff back home going on. So, that is it. Bring over a pot of sauce and meat.
we have homemade meatball subs, which Leanna is about to dig into. Now, the, the meatballs themselves, unfortunately, got a little bit singed on the outside, but when we actually put them in here, they, the meat looked perfectly cooked. So, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. My homemade meatball subs, what do you think? It is the most sexual meatball sub I've ever had. Really? Most sexual. Because I've never had one before. But you never had a meatball sub? Wow. Hello, not Italian. <laughs> I guess that's true. So, yeah. And the one before that. You're All looking right, for one that doesn't make those like shit. Sure that, uh... Leanna's awake. She's not been feeling too well. I want to make sure she's awake because she has to start making dinner. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Are you fucking kidding me? Did he just say his girlfriend's sick, but he's got to go wake her up <laughs> to make sure she can cook his fat ass dinner? <laughs> Holy shit, what an irredeemable piece of crap. Yeah, God, my girlfriend who sells her shitty fucking soap to support my fat ass. Uh, she's real sick right now, but I better go make sure she's awake to cook me dinner. Wow, what a champion. Who doesn't want to be his girlfriend? You can hear him in the background. Yeah, wake up, bitch. I need my hot pockets. Wow. Why is she fucking All this right. man? <sighs> Alright, everyone. Well, hold on a second. And the reason I say that, we're going to get started, but I'm wondering where the hell Leanna is because, uh, <laughs> Leanna was at work and, uh, never, didn't come home yet. And she was supposed to be home. And I don't know where the hell she is. I'm going to see if I can get in contact with her, because I'm a little nervous. Hopefully nothing happened, but... Oh, Golden Colts just did 100-bit cheer. He says, I gotta go. Hope it's a good stream. Thank you, Golden Colts. Uh, let me just send her a text. Chances are she's just caught up at work. She already told me today was probably going to be a crazy day at work. So... Let me just double-check she didn't come in, but usually when she comes in when I'm streaming, she at least pokes her head in the door to let me know that she's home, you know? Give me a second here, I'll just run out. I'm pretty sure she's not home yet, but let me just double check. Just to make sure I'm not... Oh, Ouch. Okay, she just texted me back. She says she's just leaving now. So, chances are I'll be hearing shortly <laughs> when she gets home about how horrible her day at work was. Steward360 just said, Oh, Phil's got his leash short. It's not that I have a short leash, it's that I just want to make sure she's okay. Because like I said, normally if she's going to be late or whatever, she'll tell me. So it's out of the ordinary for her to not be home on time and not tell me that something's going on. I could care less if she does something. Or sometimes she goes out with friends and has a coffee or, you know, I don't give a crap what she does as long as she's safe. And that's what I'm concerned about. There's another robot body. Hi, man. Do you have a What? I still can't hear you. Yeah. I can't. I seriously can't. I'm wearing headphones. That's what I thought. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. You're saying stuff, and I'm, all I hear is. Bruh, 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 bruh. That's what I hear. Don't worry. That's what I hear when you talk too. All right. Here we go. How the fuck am I gonna do this? Typical men can't satisfy the simple needs of a woman. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now you made me waste a healing item. Well, everyone in stream chat's reacting, but I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing here. Well, that'd be a first. <laughs> God damn it. Darth Vikings is what a singer. But I don't even know what that means. What a singer. No one's singing. No one's singing, but I'm dying. I can't get this mission. It's tough. Well, you know, we'll just have to end the stream early and I can take you to the burn war. <laughs> Can I please concentrate now? Thank you. Thank you. Can you allow me to concentrate on the game? It's not distracting me. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do this. Oh shit. You couldn't do it even though I no. did distract you. Yeah, no, because oh, you are shit. distracting me just by sitting here. Oh, I'm not gonna shit. be able to do it. Oh shit. It's almost as if you're pushing your problems back to me. I'll come back later. I'm ready for my apology now. It has nothing to do with, with apologizing. You were distracting me! I am ready for my apology, please. No, you're not getting one. <laughs> you're not getting one because you were incredibly distracting when I was trying to do it. Oh, well, excuse me. I'm sorry. My feminine wilds are so distracting. 
They are. To you as a man. This is a, a, a man zone. This whole room is a man zone. I spray it with musk every night. Well then guess what? This down here can remain a man zone. It is a man zone too. Yeah, well guess what? There's never gonna be a woman in that man <laughs> zone now. Ever. For that. Excuse me while my, my feminine well, wife anyway, distracted you. Since you're trying to hijack the entire stream here, I'm gonna see if this guy has another mission. It looks like it unlocked. God damn it! I screwed up the jump. It's all your fault. Wow, not even trying now. Now everything's just my it fault. It is. It's your fault. Oh, well, Jesus, it must also be my fault when the laundry is done, when I cook you delicious <laughs> meals. I'm sorry I am so Oh my god. A human being. <laughs> it's not this it's not that kind of stream. <laughs> Such a horrible person. All right, so sorry everyone. Uh I wasn't actively reading the stream chat there for a little bit simply because I was doing these challenging side missions. It's kind of hard to be reading while I'm also doing these side missions, but uh... <clears throat> God damn. Good match. Good one. Where you going? Going to, uh... We'll be back for dinner. Uh, Alright, yeah, text me, but we're definitely still doing yeah. dinner, right? Okay. Okay. Dr. Fate. I can't hear you. I have fun looks like the actor. Henry Cavill, I think. I don't remember. Mm. He was from the tutor. <clears throat> Alright. Swamp thing. More swampy. If this guy just spams projectiles, I'm screwed again. Fighters <laughs> approaching Fortress of Solitude. Um. All right, so here's what happened, everyone. I was sitting here, I was doing the podcast. As you know, I'm in the middle of my story about MCNs, right? In the middle of my story. Um, and I'm, you know, going full force. In fact, I was getting to the big climactic part of what actually happened at the end there. Um, you know, with my story with this pulled Javi network or whatever. And as I'm about to get to, like, the climactic part, I get a phone call. I'm like, oh boy. And it's from Leanna's job. And they're like, we need you to come in right now. Uh, we got a problem. And I walk in to the front main area because I don't know where to go. I don't know if they brought her to emergency. I don't know if she's been already, if she's going to be admitted to the hospital. I don't know what's going on, how serious this whole situation is. I have no idea, Okay. Uh, Fly Eagles Fly, shout out to Fly Eagles Fly who just did a, uh, or just, or just subscribed to the channel actually. Thank you Fly Eagles Fly, I appreciate that. And I go over there, talk to a security guy, you know, kick makes a copy of my license, checks me in. He says, okay, she's down there, she's in room 28. I said, so what's the deal? He says, well, it says here, you know, she had a pain, another anxiety attack. Well, not another because they don't know that she's had them in the past. She says, she had an anxiety attack. Um, apparently they, you know, she's drugged and she's in this room awaiting uh, a doctor to kind of come, either come in or whatever. I guess a doctor coming to, coming in to, to check her out. Or, no, 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 actually, I take that back. He said, no, he did say that. He had told me there was a doctor that was checking her out or something like that. And I was like, okay. So, I go, I walk through, I go all the way to the, to the back of the emergency area where they've got her in a room, and I go in, and she's conscious, but she's kind of loopy. You could tell they did something, they drugged her or something, because she wasn't in no panic or nothing, you know, no anxiety or nothing. She was just like, oh, like loopy like this, right? Um, so, I, you know, obviously you say you're okay, you didn't fall, you didn't hit your head or nothing, right? No, just, you know, she, it happens, it sucks, because it happens every once in a while, and now this is the worst one she's ever had, so maybe that she has to go see, you know, her doctor and, and try to get some kind of thing to take care of it because the, the the bottom line is with anxiety attacks they suck the reason that they suck is there's really no way to cure them okay um there's things you can do like for example you could try a certain kind of breathing or um if there's someone who's like constantly has mental issues and is having these problems they could go on an antidepressant but that's not the situation here the situation is every once in a while she just gets one and now it's like a tizzy you got to try to calm her down right um now in this case they drugged her so she got drugs, you know, she was woozy or whatever. 
So I sat there with her, and I, I'm not even kidding. We're sitting there waiting. Wait, I said, well, what are we waiting for? And she says, I guess they told me that there's going to be a counselor that's going to be coming in and talking to me about this and what happened and, or whatever to make sure I'm all right. And then, and, you know, I can't, I can't, we can't get any further help or diagnosis until this counselor comes in. Okay. All right. So we're sitting there, and I look down, and on her left, she's in, you know, she's on a hospital gurney or whatever, sitting there in the room. On her lap is a brochure. I said, what's this? I pick it up. Finance, how to pay, finance. I'm like, you're in the emergency room. Like, you're, they already gave you a way to pay the bill. And I'm looking at it like, imagine if you were here and you had your arm chopped off and your arm is fucking splurting blood. Before they start suturing it, do they hand you the payment brochure first just to be sure you could fucking pay? I couldn't believe it. I was like, if that was me and I was sitting in an emergency room, I'd be fucking offended that they would hand me this up front like that. Seriously, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here with this. I'm insulted that you hand me a payment fucking plan already. I mean, this is ridiculous. I couldn't believe it, okay? I couldn't believe it. So, the buzz to find out what the hell's going on here. So, she buzzes, and we wait, and we wait. About five minutes. It wasn't too bad. Nurse comes in. Woman, she says, what's going, what's wrong? What's going on? And Leanna says, well, no, she's so groggy. So she can barely talk. She's like, oh, nothing. Yeah, I just want to know what's happening here. Is there, you know, Are we waiting for a counselor, a doctor, or whatever? And the woman looks at us with, like, a look of scorn, right? A look of scorn. She's like, you've only been here, like, an hour and a half, and we have other patients. And I'm like, what kind of fucking place is this? <laughs> like, you're going to talk down to, the, to a patient who's been waiting an hour and a half, and no one's come in to tell her the status of what's going on? And she asks, and you get angry? And I'm like, what the hell? So I said, listen. I said, we're both hungry. She needs food. She hasn't eaten today. So the woman says, okay, I'll go get you some food. So she leaves, she comes back with a turkey sandwich, it's like turkey on, on rye bread with a piece of lettuce and a piece of cheese and like a packet of mustard and a couple saltines and a, and a, a apple juice and like a little, the apple juice looked like it was in like a yogurt cup, I've never even seen apple juice stored like that before, and uh, a string cheese. Now, Leanna hates string cheese, and Leanna wasn't super hungry for, like, a sandwich, so she ate some saltines, good, she got something in her, and she, there was water there to give her water, she didn't want the apple juice. Two and a half fucking hours we sat there, okay, waiting for a counselor to come into the room. The counselor was an elderly woman, you could tell she was probably in her 60s, white woman, comes in with two pieces of paper, okay, she comes in, hi, how you doing, are you in pain, no, that's good, uh, are you still, you're still having anxiety, no, that's good, okay, uh, they gave you some drugs, right? Yeah, okay, that's why you're calm, that's why you're woozy, it's because you're on the drugs. So here's two pieces of paper explaining what anxiety attacks are. Have you ever had an anxiety attack before? And I'm like, so they admitted her, or they didn't admit her, they bring her into the, the emergency room, they get administered a drug, and no one even asked her when she was brought in anything at all. They had no basic information whatsoever about this thing. She'd been sitting there for two and a half hours. She might have been having a life-crippling anxiety attack where she's going to fucking, you know, lose her mind and be mentally lose her, lose her shit. And she comes in and asks, did you ever have an anxiety attack before? She's like, yes. Uh, are they usually like this? Well, you know, I have them, but this is the worst one I've ever had. Oh, well, do you have a doctor? Yeah. A primary care physician? Yeah. Well, we recommend that you go see your doctor. <laughs> and she looks around the corner, she says, hi. She says, well, did the nurse give you the paperwork that said what, what you're here for? And we're like, yeah, here's the paperwork about anxiety. Okay, bye, see you later. That was it. So, three hours in a hospital, in an emergency room area, nothing whatsoever useful was done whatsoever to Leanna. They, the drug that they gave her to help her was hour, or an hour earlier. That's American healthcare. Now, by the way, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we don't know what the bill is because we don't have it yet. They're going to mail it, obviously. I guarantee you it's going to be like a thousand bucks. I'm not even exaggerating. I guarantee you that bill's going to fucking show up and it's going to be anywhere between 500 to a thousand bucks. I guarantee it. Yeah, she has insurance. She actually is covered in insurance because uh, she's already under the plan of her, her mother. That's that's what was one of the things that Obamacare actually helped with is that it allows people who are young enough to be covered up to the age of 26 under the health insurance plan of their parents. So she's still covered under her mother. But I guarantee, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going to get a giant bill in the mail 
for nothing, for a pill. Well, they could have just handed her the pill and said $80 for the pill or whatever, but instead they had to bring her to the fucking hospital and they did nothing. They literally did nothing to help her and now she's going to get a giant bill. So there you go. Isn't that a great story, ladies and gentlemen? Um, isn't that great? I mean, it's just such a great American healthcare system, right? So now she's zonked out. She's sleeping, you know, in the room because of, you know, everything. She's still on the pills. The pills that made her all loopy or whatever. So, I mean, we did. On the way home, I stopped and we got food. We grabbed, like, chicken sandwiches and we just ate them and now she's sleeping. So, so that's what happened. Unbelievable. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. The thing is, I know if this ever happens again, I'm going to tell him, you are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you get no permission to fucking do it. You can't give her a pill. You want to give her a pill? Give her a pill. And that's it. Because you're just going to waste our time again. You, you didn't help us at all. I th What I thought, when they said counselor, I thought they were going to have like an actual psychiatrist or counselor come in and talk. And let's talk. Maybe we, maybe I can talk out, talk it out and help you with some of your stress or your issues. Or maybe something happened at work in particular that you can talk through that could help you so that you can get it, that stress relieved and it doesn't happen again. That was the biggest joke I've ever seen in my life. She could have been, that woman could have been anyone. That woman could have been the fucking janitor that just walked in. Who knows? Because she had no knowledge besides what she had on a piece of paper. And by the way, the article, and this is not even an exaggeration. The article they brought in about anxiety was from 1996. A 21-year-old outdated article from the Mayo Clinic about anxiety. Oh my God. Uh. 89.7 KACC. We got a dedication in. <sighs> these, these kids and their names, I swear. So, Dark Side Phil wants to dedicate a song to Panda Lee. He wants to dedicate Baby Come Back by Player. I, I don't know what to say, guys. Okay, so, anyway... Here's Baby Come Back by Player, and they actually wanted me to say Baby Come Back, ack, 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 ack. I don't, I don't get it. So I got a story for the history books. I just got off the bus like a minute ago. But when I got on the bus, there was a guy sitting in the aisle across from me looking at me real weird. And as soon as I sit down, he starts going off. But I had my earbuds in, so I paused my music. He didn't know. Apparently, he mistook my dress pants as a uniform, and he thought I was a cop. And he was talking about how he was going to try to fight me. And that, like, the police weren't going to save me. And I, I got to be nice to the brothers. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy on? I don't know if he was drunk or high or what was going on with this guy, but apparently my purple velvet shirt, which you can't see in the dark, but my purple velvet shirt and my casual boots and my dress pants apparently make me a cop. So I almost had to tase someone on a bus because they thought I was a cop. That is the weirdest thing I've All right. Hello, everybody. Phil and Kat here, and welcome to a special video that we've been planning on working on for a while. Smash the like button. Take your mouse or take your finger on your touchscreen device and absolutely destroy the like button on this video. Just go...